A Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate Production. Zuma Sampalataya with Papa K. Zuma Sampalataya is a podcast about Christianity, specifically the Catholic faith. It aims to break down and discuss faith matters in a very light manner, which targets the ordinary Filipino household Catholic through one-to-one mode of discussion with guests. Zuma Sampalataya with Papa K. Hello everyone, and here we are again for another episode of Zuma Sampalataya. For this episode, we have a very special guest in our midst. He will help us discuss how to integrate values in coaching. And this person has been around and had made waves coaching our men's national basketball team and made history recently leading the Ateneo Blue Eagles to a three-peat. My friends, let us welcome a good friend, Coach Tab Baldwin. Welcome, Coach, to Sumasam Palataya. Thank you, Chris. Great to be here and uh, look forward to our chat. All right. It's, it's our honor to have you in this show. It's the first time I, I think that you will be a guest in a religious podcast <laughs> with a sports tone. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Coach, for my first question, in your vast experience as a coach, how different was it to coach the Ateneo Blue Eagles, given it is a Catholic and a Jesuit school? Um, I think it is different because um, it really wasn't a challenge for me because I grew up Catholic and I and um, I've you know been Catholic all my life and you know tried and failed like most of us to to live by the edicts of our faith. Um, but that's, you know, that's what the Lord said we will do. He will fail and we will fail and he will be there to redeem us. He will us. there with us. we be there that's, with us. Exactly. Um, but in terms of, you know, complying with anything that the Jesuits or Ateneo University would want me to do in, in my coaching, in terms of the values and, and the way that I coach, not the content, but, you know, the manner and, and the demeanor there was really no challenges there at all. I, I think it was a fairly seamless um, adjustment for me uh, coaching a Catholic university. And, and really, it's an honor, you know, to coach in a Catholic university and, and even more of an honor to coach at Ateneo with its great history. And, and um, you know, it's, it's uh, the mark that it has made on, on Philippine basketball, Philippine society. But I think, you know, through its alumni a broader mark on society and even on the world so it's been a great privilege to to be associated with the university so how was it different to coach a club or a national team uh, versus i think a, a collegiate team i think chris primarily the difference comes in coaching um junior players or younger players versus professional players and there were, there were plenty of adjustments. And the biggest one, there's a lot more teaching. And I think, you know, in my first year, I, I struggled a little bit with that adjustment. I had to realize just how much teaching that I had to do compared to the coaching that I had done in international teams or national teams and, and professional teams in Europe and the Middle East. And, um, but, but I also found it, very enjoyable, you know, to get back more to the roots of coaching and, and uh, the teaching aspect and the development aspect of working with players almost more so than working with teams. And that may sound a bit unusual because by definition, I'm not an individual coach. I'm a coach of a team. But our methodology is to very much focus on the development of the individual. So from that standpoint, it's been very enjoyable. So how are you, Coach, as a teacher? How is Tab Baldwin as a teacher uh, in, in, in respect to that being a coach of uh, young, young men? Well, I, I can say that I'm certainly not a cheerleader. I'm certainly not uh, looking for their strengths. I'm certainly not um, 
always being positive in my teaching and my feedback to them, I would say that I'm much more a critic. I'm much more trying to identify their areas of weakness, uh, make them aware of those, and then create formulas and drills and, and um, methods for them to uh, be, become aware of their weaknesses through their play and then to work on correcting them and uh, develop more strengths instead of having weaknesses. So I'm certainly not a coach that, that says, you're a very good shooter, so let's try and find as many ways as we can to get you shots. I, I would rather say, oh, you're an excellent shooter, but you're a very poor ball handler, so let's focus on your ball handling, and let's try to make you a better ball handler and turn a weakness into a strength. So we, we spoke of basketball technicalities, of ball handling, of and shooting. Now, how do you integrate values in coaching these young men? I think values come in in terms of attitude more than anything else and, and work ethic. And I think work ethic is a value. So we love players that have a great work ethic. You know, we, uh, we prefer not to try to teach them to have a great work ethic. We would rather identify young players who, you know, have a hunger to realize their potential and through that hunger have developed on their own a great work ethic. But oftentimes, you know, we find that, that there's work to be done in order to help them realize how important it is to try and outwork everybody else, you know, to try and be an excellent worker. But beyond work ethic as a value, there are other values that we attach more to attitude and leadership. And, you know, values such as being a servant because you play in a team game, you know, realizing that it's not just getting an assist that makes you a servant in the game of basketball. It's setting a good screen. It's spacing the floor correctly to help other players have the room that they need. It's cutting hard even when you're just a decoy cutter. It's running the floor hard from the defensive end to the offensive end because that creates opportunities for the player bringing the ball up the floor. So all of these methodologies of being a great servant allow this value to be realized. And then, of course, we preach this value in their life, you know, beyond the sport of basketball. It's pretty much uh, connected to Ateneus being a man of others, man for others, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah. exactly. Being a servant so, you know, and being a man for others. And who Correct. in your players really exemplify that being a man for others thing? I'm sorry, Chris, say that uh, again. Uh, who in your, among your players in Ateneo really exemplifies that man for others? Oh, gosh, I, I, think, that, <laughs> I think that we're looking for that from all of them. From all of them. But, you know, I think if I had to um, designate one particular player... You know, we made Mike Nieto the captain of our squad in his junior year, <clears throat> or I'm sorry, in his fourth year, even though he wasn't a starter, even though he didn't play huge minutes, because we identified that he had that ability not only to be that himself for his teammates, but to identify that in other players and to help them be a man for their teammates. So, you know, he was a guy that called on everybody to do that. And now we have Gian Mamuyak stepping into that role. And Gian also in the way he plays and, and is becoming more of a vocal leader in terms of, of, terms of, of calling out other players and, and trying to make sure that everybody fits this mold of being a great teammate while they are working on their own game, while they are being selfish and trying to realize their own potential by working extremely hard on their own skills and, and physical development. So we can say that the operative term for the team that you have built uh, through values is servanthood, being a servant Serv for others. Correct. Servanthood is a pillar of our program. It is one of the things that we base 
whether we are successful or not upon. So we don't base it on wins and losses. We don't base it on championships. We base it on being able to identify through our daily operations, through our daily habits and activities, are we serving one another? And the results are, was followed, right? It's secondary. Well, we believe yeah, that. Yeah. We believe that. We believe that wins and championships are a byproduct of doing yes. things the right way. Yeah. We don't believe that our goal should be Uh, to be standing on a podium or to be a most valuable player or to be in a highlight reel. We think those things come to those players and to those teams who in their daily habits do things the right way. More, more or less, that's the foundation for that, for championships, right? That's the, We the believe f- that. Uh, yeah. We believe that, yes. So, Coach, what kind of advice would you give to players nowadays who – maybe blinded by materialism in the college level versus upholding values of loyalty, of being selfless, being man for others uh, in playing for their schools? I, I would say that, you know, I would encapsulate my advice to players this way. I would say dream like you are the greatest player on the planet and nothing for you is impossible. Work like you are the worst player on the planet. And the only way you're going to ever achieve anything is by outworking the player who is just a little bit better than you. And then when you are achieving, when you are starting to realize success because of your attitude and your work ethic, share that. Share that with your team, share that with your coaches, share that with your family, share that with your fans, and realize that much of who you become in this world, if you're a success, is through God. And it's God-given. And we should never be arrogant in our success. We should always be offering our successes to those people around us and offering them up to the Lord in thanksgiving for the many blessings that we are given. So, Coach, what is your message for your followers, especially the Ateneo community? Oh, very simple. You know, thank you, first of all, for, uh, you know, the support and endorsement. Um, thank you for the pressure that you put on me to, you know, every day try and be somebody who lives up to the, the fabulous reputation of our university. Thank you to my players for demanding of me and my coaching staff that we come to, to work every day to be their instruments for success. You know, we want to be tools for our players. We don't want our players to be tools for us. So, you know, my message is one of gratitude. You know, the same as when I, I thank the Lord for the blessings of the life and career that I've had. And, you know, I, I, I'm so genuine in that because I wasn't always this way. You know, I, I was a lot more probably arrogant. I was a lot more caught up in, in what I thought I knew and what I had learned in my career. And, you know, it's been in the latter part of my career that I've realized that, that these legion of players that have played for me and these hundreds upon hundreds, if not more, of games that I've been blessed to coach in and and the thousands of competitors that I've coached against, you know, all of these people have been a blessing to me. And they have helped me realize a wonderful career and a wonderful life. And very, very few of them were ever created by me. So they really came to me. And they have helped build my character they have helped build my success they have helped fulfill my dreams so instead of looking at myself and and thinking you know ha, you know have i done a good job have i become a good coach have i had a great career i prefer now to look outside myself and look at all of these forces on my life with gratitude Because without them, I wouldn't have anything. And so, 
Um, in that sense, it's so much fun now in my career and in my life to, to look at my competitors and, and, and be grateful for them, to look at my players and be grateful for them and enjoy their success. Look at my assistant coaches and, and realize what a blessing they are. Look at, look at our fans and look at our alumni and look at the whole Philippine basketball landscape and understand how blessed I am to be here. So, you know, that, that's my perspective on, on, you know, what I get up every day and see in front of me. And it's very, very refreshing for me to feel this way, as opposed to always thinking I have to live up to some, some of my own standard, you know, well, my standard is just to be grateful and to work hard. And in doing that, you know, this is a wonderful job and I'm extremely blessed. And also, I'm blessed to have known you. Uh, I've been a follower since day one. And uh, I'm very thankful that you, you accepted this invitation. And uh, we're very thankful that uh, you're here around to remind us that uh, we must go back to basics. We must love the game more than uh, what we used to do before. And you know what? In, in, in Filipino, uh, when I entered Ateneo, when I started my uh, master's degree uh, program there, there was a t-shirt in the bookstore. And it says, Ang sarap maging Atenista. It feels good to be an Atenean. And it feels good right now that you're there at the helm. And you are there in the, in the presence leading the charge for our Blue Eagles and in Philippine basketball in general. Thank you very much, Coach Tab. And allow me to, as we end this, this interview, as I always end it with a prayer. Uh, can we offer a prayer for, for you, Coach? Absolutely. But first, Chris, I would just like to say yes. thank you to you and thank you for your service to, as a teacher to your students, to your school, even though it's LaSalle. And it's USD, the, USD actually. I oh, in USD, yes. Yeah. And, and thank you so much for the friendship that we have developed yes. over, really, I guess, during this pandemic. Yes. You know, we've had because I believe in, in your principles, I believe in what you preach, and uh, uh, I fully support what you do. Well, I appreciate that, and and um, you know, please understand that what I do is really a reflection of the people that I work with and the people that are work around me you know they they help build my character as a coach they help build my philosophy and implement my philosophy so you know i'm beholden to them and and um so i will pass along your support and i appreciate you so much for everything that you do and uh, god willing you will continue in good health and continue Thank you very much in in your work with other coaches with your students and and as you work towards your own thesis now uh to, to further build your own cv and and so that you can touch more lives so thank you very much chris and, and i would be honored much. to share a prayer with you thank you very much then let us pray in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen heavenly father we praise and thank you for this time that you gave us to have coach Tab baldwin in our midst. May you always bless him. May you always guide him in his mission here in the Philippines to still influence young men and women who would love to take on the sport of basketball. Take care of him as you, he undertakes his mission. We all this ask to our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in your the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the, name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, Coach Tab, for accepting our invitation. You are such a blessing to us and to the community here in the Philippines. Thank you very much, Coach. And you are a blessing to me. And, and uh, thank, you. thank you very much. And I wish you all the best. Stay safe. Yes. Stay healthy. And God willing, we will all be back bouncing basketballs on yes, the court. Yes, we'll see each other 
uh, at the Coliseum cheering for Ateneo. One big fight. And ladies and gentlemen, this has been an episode again of Sumasampalataya. If you have questions about your faith, come with us, join us in Sumasampalataya. See you around. If you enjoy this episode, be sure to subscribe so you are notified when a new episode is posted in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or via RSS. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, rate and review this podcast and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And if you want to know more, check out www.guerillapodcast.com.au or guerillapodcast.com.ph A Guerilla Podcast Syndicate Production.